anxiety is the most common uh, pathophysiology in the United States. And so it's no surprise that the MCAT is going to require at least a little bit of knowledge around anxiety and its related disorders. Passage 7 in the Dole AMC sample test uh, psychosocial section is no exception. So let's get right into it and see what, uh, why these kids are so anxious. So let's start flow charting it. Research has established that both biological factors, such as the activation of the limbic system and low levels of inhibitory transmitters, and environmental, and environmental factors, such as early attachment and parental control, contribute to anxiety disorders. So already I'm seeing something that I can flow chart on, which is not always the case with psychosis passages. So we know that limbic system activation, low levels of, I'll go ahead and put cap, GABA because that's the most common um, inhibitory transmitter. And environmental factors, it doesn't give us a whole lot of information as far as like, is it high parental control, low, whatever. So I'm just going to say attachment and parental control. All of those have something to do with the development of anxiety disorders. As a study was designed to identify risk factors for childhood anxiety, the researchers collected information on a sample of child participants regarding the participant's parental history of anxiety disorders, the parenting styles of the participant's parent, and the participant's anxiety symptoms. So there's our variables right there, parental history of anxiety, um, parenting styles, and the participant's anxiety symptoms. Both parental history of anxiety disorders and high parental criticism were found to be associated with childhood anxiety. So boom, it gives us the results right away. Selected results of the study are shown in figure one. So I'm going to write down that family history and high parental criticism equals anxiety. So let's do a little bit of figure interpretation. Of course, I always read the figure caption first. It says percent of children with high anxiety symptoms by parental history of anxiety disorders and parental criticism. Note the differences seen in the graph are statistically significant. So it looks like, um, then I'll go immediately into my axes. Percentage of children with high anxiety symptoms. And then we got on our x-axis, the measured variables. Um, they're not called independent because we're not independently manipulating them. They're just measured. Um, parental history of anxiety disorders and parental criticism. And it looks like from a glance, we can see that parental history is more important in predicting uh, the, the percentage of childhood anxiety symptoms. So I'm just going to go back up to my flow chart and put like, especially for family history right there. A follow-up study included only the participants who showed high anxiety symptoms. So all the participants are going to have high anxiety. Researchers examined the role of coping strategies on anxiety symptoms. Participating children were taught to engage in coping strategies such as deep breathing, positive thinking, and muscle relaxation. The frequency with which the participants engaged in coping strategies was assessed daily over a period of three weeks. I haven't come across any like basic sciences so far. Um, this kind of experimental method, like the strategies, the coping strategies, not going to be important, hardly ever going to be tested unless it's like um, a specific basic science that they mention. And deep breathing is not a basic science. Um, during the first week, the participants did not obtain any rewards. So now we're talking about rewards, which, you know, if we're thinking about like reward schedules and operant conditioning, then that, that is a basic science. Um, did not obtain any reward for engaging in coping strategies. During the second week, they received a prize every time they engaged in a learned coping strategy. And during the third week, they received a prize in a random fashion only on some of the occasions when they engaged in a learned coping strategy. So automatically, I'm thinking this is obviously talking about operant conditioning and um, the reinforcement schedules. And it's even going into like the specific types of reinforcement that they are engaging in uh, for this study. So I'm fully expecting a question on this. So there we go. Not a whole lot. The key to these psychosis passages, if you are having trouble with them, is being able to set up experimental methods. So find the variables, being able to interpret the figures. Um, and that is extremely important on all the sections, but especially psychosis. And also being able to notice when they are basically dangling a basic science in front of your face, like they are with this operant conditioning passage and being able to predict the kinds of questions they can ask. So right into the questions 35 says, which procedure is being applied in the follow-up study of children who displayed high anxiety symptoms? Boom. I knew this was coming. This is operant conditioning. I told you all about it already. But if you don't know these other uh, words, they extinction and spontaneous recovery kind of go along with classical conditioning. But the reinforcement, rewards and punishments, those kinds of words are always going to go with operant conditioning. Classical conditioning is going to see more words like associate. 
36 says the schedule of reinforcement used in week three of the follow-up study is. So this is basically asking, do you know what these reinforcement schedules are and do you know what they look like and can you pick it out if you are given scenarios? So it says during week three, they received a prize in a random fashion only on some of the occasions when they engaged in a learned coping strategy. So having um, a reward presented to you in a random fashion is definitely going to be variable. But whether it's ratio versus interval is based on, um, you know, do you, are you performing these coping strategies for a certain amount of time and then you get a reward? Or is it like you just perform them and that's considered like an episode where you are engaging in coping strategies? And the answer to that for this scenario is going to be the latter. So that's going to be a variable ratio schedule. This is a fantastic opportunity to have all of these reinforcement schedules on a Anki card um, and even make up your own scenario so that you have your own example of what each of those schedules looks like. If you can come up with your own example, then it's a lot easier to be able to pull it like, okay, well, this is like the time where I talked about how you give your kid an allowance if they sweep, but only in random spurts or whatever your scenario is going to be. 37 says, based on the results of the first study, uh, can the researchers conclude that genes play a causal role in anxiety disorders? So I see a red flag here, and that's causal role. You better have really, really strong passage evidence that there is um, a causal relationship, an experimental method with a true independent variable. And in this study, we don't see that. It's really hard for psych researchers to be able to uh, perform a true experiment where you can um, extract a causal role, especially in pathophysiology research like mental disorders. So automatically, I'm going to say probably not. You probably cannot get um, a causal role out of this study. But let's look at the answer choices. A says yes, because the results revealed that children whose parents had anxiety symptoms were more likely to show these symptoms themselves. So we did see that um, family history was a good predictor of childhood anxiety. But think about this. I mean, if, a, if an anxious adult was to bring up a child in a sort of anxious household or whatever, um, then they might be teaching these children the same triggers or be like, oh, but did you, did you read about the most recent way that people are murdering other people? Like my mom does that. She's like, make sure to park in, you know, I mean, she's very specific, watches the ID channel all the time. And so me having... Um, Anxious genes does not make me anxious, but possibly being raised in a household where I'm constantly reminded of the newest ways that people are murdering other people, that could um, in turn make me anxious. And that's not genes, that's environment. So we cannot, we cannot tease apart what it is from this experimental method. So that's not the right answer because environment could be playing the role. B says yes, because the participants were randomly selected and the researchers controlled for parental history of anxiety. So same, same reason there. It could be in the environment. C says no, because high parental criticism, which is an environmental factor, was also related to an increase in anxiety symptoms. I mean, that's true, but to me, like, you could be like, okay, well, then, um, you know, if our bar goes to right here on parental criticism, then it goes to right here, and then the rest of this is genes. And they do that, those kinds of analyses pretty frequently if they are trying to extract specific predictions. Um, but in this case, that's not the best reason why we can't um, put a causal relationship in this study. I'll put it maybe beside it. It's okay. D says no, because although parental history of anxiety predicts childhood anxiety, this may also be a result of social learning. So that's exactly what I was talking about with like, you know, bringing up your child in an anxious household and having the same triggers and things like that. So that's going to be our best answer here. 38 says, how is the frequency with which each child engages in coping strategies likely to change over the course of the follow-up study? So the follow-up study was the one that was talking about the reinforcement schedules. And this question is basically asking, if we were to simplify it down, it's asking how well do these reinforcement schedules work in comparison to one another? Now, when I was studying for the MCAT, I don't know how they specifically stack up against one another, like all four of them, but I did know one thing and that's that variable ratio is the like gold standard. It's the best, um, it's the best way to reinforce something and actually get the behavior that you want out of the participant. So our three, um, our three scenarios were no reinforcement or no reward, a fixed ratio, because it, they received a prize every time they engaged in a learned coping strategy. And then the third week, um, which was a variable ratio where they only received a prize sometimes if they engaged in that behavior. 
So no reinforcement schedule is probably going to be worse than any reinforcement schedule. So we should be able to kind of logically gather that. Variable ratio is going to be our best. And fixed ratio is probably going to be in the middle. Now, I don't know how fixed ratio, variable interval, and fixed interval line up with each other. I would imagine that variable interval, anything variable, I would imagine would be better. But I'm not going to put that out there. I just know that variable ratio is the uh, best one. That's why gambling is so addictive. Because, you know, you don't get a reward every time that you pull the lever on the slot machine. It's just sometimes. Um, so you're always like, well, this next pool could be the one where I win the jackpot or whatever. So that's why it's, it's addictive, um, or it is just greater reinforcing behavior. So if this is the way that the study kind of goes along, we should see that these children engage in the coping strategies more often. So that would be answer choice B. We're not going to see a decline on the third week because again, the variable ratio is going to be the best. And we're not going to see the uh, behaviors being stable over the first two weeks because it should get it should get better. If they're reinforcing behavior versus not reinforcing the coping strategies, then we should see an increase when they are reinforcing them. And then fluctuate on the third week. I don't even know what that's supposed to mean. Like, yes, it gets it should increase over the third week. But overall, B is our best answer here. All right, guys, we flew through that. Um, I hope it helped. If you want to see more content like this, then just leave a comment down below. Hit like and subscribe if you aren't already. I will see you in the next one.